welcome to Math for Juniors. I am Miss Marks and this is my assistant Snail. Working very hard on something Snail? Miss Marks, it's you who has given me so much work to do. Uh, it's so difficult to put it together. I'm tired. Snail, it's not that difficult at all. What I want you to do is organize this data so that I can get some idea of the marks obtained by my students in the last exam. Basically, you need to tell me how many students have got full marks and how many got minimum and so on. But Miss Marks, that's even tougher. I think I need a snack break before I tackle all this. Wait Snail. It's simpler than you think. All you need to learn is to make a frequency distribution table. Now what's that? Sounds like I have heard this term. That's why let's zoom in the virtual world to learn more about it. Consider a basket containing 17 fruits. To know the exact number of each particular fruit in the basket, you classify the fruits into categories. Now to find out the number of fruits belonging to each category, an easy method followed is the use of tally marks. They keep track of numbers in groups of 5. One vertical line count 1, two vertical lines count 2. 2, 3 vertical lines count 3, 4 vertical lines count 4 and the diagonal line across the 4 vertical lines count 5. Let the first fruit picked be an apple. So we make one vertical line against the category of apple in the table. Consider that the second fruit picked is a banana. So we make one vertical line against banana. Let the third fruit picked be again an apple. So we make one more vertical line in the category of apple. Similarly, we pick all the fruits one by one and put the tally marks in the respective places in the table. Tally marks help to avoid missing an item or counting one item more than once. The number of times a particular item occurs in a given data is known as the frequency of that particular item. Thus, frequency of apple is 5, frequency of banana is 6, frequency of orange is 2, frequency of mango is 1, and the frequency of Sapota is 3. The table so obtained is known as the frequency distribution table. Welcome back to the real world. Snail, have you understood what to do now? A little bit, Miss Max. But um, I don't have bananas, mangoes and apples. And everyone knows, name an eatable and I turn hungry. Snail, I asked you to finish some work and again you're stuck only to food and its thoughts, huh? Miss Marks, I'm not stuck on food. Even though I don't have fruits, I have marks and that too of about 50 students. So then what you need to do is make categories. Say 35 to 40, 40 to 45 marks and mark how many students fall into each category. Hey, now that makes sense. Oh great, at last you understood how to go about it, huh? See, I'm smart. You need not to worry. <laughs> I still am not sure. Till the time I figure out how smart is Snail, you all go into the virtual world to learn more about frequency distribution. Suppose the heights of 15 students in the class are as follows. To read and understand the given data easily, you can break it into groups. For this, locate the minimum and maximum heights. 
they are 150 cm and 172 cm respectively. To include all the observations in the groups, you make the various groups with equal intervals. Such groupings are called continuous class intervals or classes. This is because in any two consecutive class intervals, the lowest number of the succeeding class is equal to the greatest number of the preceding class. The size of each class interval is called as class size or class width. Here you can see that the class size of each class interval is 4. Well, there you have it, Snail. I hope now you can make that table really quickly for me, huh? Miss Marks, sure I can. Uh, but I'm a little confused. How to take these class intervals? I mean... Well, look at the board now. If you have the range or groups of marks in which the scores of most students will fall into, then that is your class interval. And your class size here is... It's five. I'm genius. I am genius. Okay, okay. Agreed, agreed. Okay. But uh, I have another question. Go on. What if a student has got 40 marks? Which class interval should I put the student in? 35 to 40 or 40 to 45? That's an excellent question, Snail. Let's look at the answer in the virtual world. The lowest number in each class interval is known as its lower class limit and the greatest number in each class interval is known as its upper class limit. Now you might be thinking that 154 is appearing in both the first and in the second interval. In which class interval should it be considered? If it's considered in both the classes, then it's counted twice. To avoid such repetition, we consider 154 in the interval 154 to 158. And it's not included in the interval 150 to 154. We can generalize that each class interval represents the height greater than or equal to the lower class limit and less than the upper class limit. Now complete the frequency distribution table by using tally marks and mentioning the number represented by tally marks in the frequency column. Frequency distribution table thus simplifies and condenses the data and enables us to observe certain important features at a glance. Welcome back from the virtual into the real world. Miss Marks, this looks like a great way to organize data. I bet a lot of people make use of it every day. Isn't it? Of course, Neil. Doctors use it to understand the frequency of diseases. Sports analysts use it to figure out performance trend of a sports person. In fact, wherever you have large data, frequency distribution steps in to make it easy to analyze the data. In fact, let me tell you something even more interesting about frequency of events. Do you know there are so many events in nature that occur at regular intervals around us? Events in nature? Yes. To begin with, look at the weather. Winter, spring, summer and monsoon. Also think of the rotation of the earth along its axis. It gives us night after day and day after night. Oh, I get it. In fact, have you noticed swing of the pendulum? Please explain. It tells all about the repetition of a function at regular intervals of time, doesn't it? 
Look at how it swings back and forth, back and forth. Oh, that's amazing! This phenomenon of how many times an event occurs in given interval of time is termed as frequency. Are there more such examples? Yes, keys in a piano have different frequencies. Light and sound waves also have frequencies and when they match our frequency, we can see and hear things perfectly. Now, let's tally up all the points that summarize our discussion on frequency distribution. In this module, you have learnt Tally marks are a quick way of keeping track of numbers in groups of 5. The number of times a particular item occurs in the given data is known as the frequency of that particular item. The table representing the various categories and their frequency is known as the frequency distribution table. The lowest number in each class interval is known as its lower class limit. The greatest number in each class interval is known as its upper class limit. When the lower limit is included and upper limit is excluded in an interval, it is known as continuous class interval. Now that's all for today on frequency distribution. And for your concentration today, Snail, I have a basket of goodies for you here. Oh wow, Miss Marks! Cookies and muffins and mm, cakes and buns. You are the best. Yes, but first you will have to make a frequency distribution table of how many cookies, how many muffins, how many... No, Miss Marks. I protest. Sorry, Snail. In my class, there's no free lunch, okay? And that's the way you learn math with practical experience. So, until next time, goodbye.